Alright, um, we're going to just fill in some of the gaps with congruency and triangles, reminding you of some of the constructions you've done recently and some of the weird cases. This, this is only going to be about the strange outliers and odd cases. So the first one is uh, when you know all the angles. Um, because there are no lengths here, this could be any size, which means that if you drew this triangle as well, yours will not match mine unless by fluke you drew exactly the same length to start with. So this, having known the angles, is not enough for no congruency because the size isn't fixed. It is enough for similarity, but it's not enough for congruency. And then for the really tricky ones. If I give you three sides, you knew how to drew that, draw that pretty well. Nine, three and four centimetres. My usual rule of thumb is to start with the long one. Well, that doesn't actually matter, it just, again, it's about planning for the space you've got to work in. If you can fit the longest edge in, you can fit the rest in. We have a length but not a direction. We need to set this to a length but not a direction. So we set that to four. And, oh dear, I haven't got enough sheets of paper here to hold this still. Around we go. And we set this to three. And around we go. And you'll notice that these two arcs don't reach each other, which means there isn't a triangle you can draw because there's no point that they will meet and work with each other. So just because I can sketch it doesn't mean it's real. And the check here is that the two short sides equal seven when you add them up. And that will never make the full length of nine centimeters you need to get to, at least not on flat paper. If you want to start breaking the rules and curving things around, then we're doing some more interesting maths, but not our year eight construction. So SSA, this is a weird one. This one can go lots of different ways. I've got a few of these lined up to do. So, uh, start with an unknown length of base, like so, measure our 40 degree angle at this vertex, bada boom, uh, that needs to be exactly 9 centimetres, so we should have paid more attention there, shouldn't I, 12, that's 9 there. That point there is nine centimeters away. Um, I need to do this at five. So 25 to 20 is five. Put the pin in there. And again, oh dear, this pin isn't sharp enough. And again, we've got a similar error to the other one where the arc doesn't reach the line we're after. So there isn't a triangle here. Just because I can label it doesn't mean it's real. So that triangle doesn't exist. That triangle cannot be drawn on flat paper. Okay. Getting weirder, it's the same SSA, so it's the same me method to draw. Unknown length, 35 degrees this time. I'm keeping it to multiples of five, make it quicker to draw. So 35 is there. I'm going that way, 8.5 centimeters, which we can do reasonably accurately, which is there. I'm setting this to 5.9. There we go. I'm doing it in the 20s, so I have to hold on to. So that's 5.9 across. And now when I sweep this around, I've got two places where it intersects. And because I've got two places, there's no way to tell which one is right. One of these gives me an acute angle here and looks more like that sketch. But if it's not to scale, you can't rely on that. And the other one of these gives me an obtuse angle here. So both of these triangles, the blue one and the green one, have exactly the same properties here. They both have 35 degrees, they both have 8.5 and they both have a 5.9 centimetre third edge. And without any more information, you can't tell which is which. This is called the ambiguous case. It will come up later when you do some trigonometry. It's a useful thing to remember that sometimes things exist, but they're not only unique. So triangles that don't exist, triangles that are actually two triangles, it all gets a bit weird around the edges. Finally, this last special case, and I'm sure those of you who are math teachers or whatnot will see what's coming here with the values I've chosen. So, unknown base again. 
angle of 30 degrees. Distance of 8.6 centimeters in that direction. So this will be really important for my accuracy. 8.6 is there. Mm, close. And then 4.3 on this thing, on the pair of compasses. That's 4.3. Now if I've got this right, brilliant. Well, ah, close enough. There is exactly one place where they touch. And if I go to that place, this should be, should be a right angle. Um, so we have a 30 degree here and an 8.6 and a 4.3 centimetre. Now this happens to be a right angle because this is, as you can imagine with this one, as these lengths get shorter, this arc gets smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually these two points get closer and closer and closer and at the very very last point this is the shortest distance possible which is why we get a right angle there. Now in fact if I knew that was a right angle I would have a right angle the hypotenuse and the side and that's where our RHS definition comes from for congruency and our condition for congruency is from this special case of SSA but given in this form you don't know that. You can do some trigonometry, if you know what that is yet, to work out that that's a right angle, but without that you cannot rely on this being a trigonometrical proof because the, sorry, without this being a congruency proof. Because as we've seen, sometimes you get two triangles, sometimes you get no triangle at all. And it's only in certain cases that you get one triangle. So you can't rely on this arrangement to get you a, con a congruent pair of triangles. You need more information. Hope that's alright for you. Enjoy!